Hello, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show audio podcast. With your host, Kenneth Bacor. With my special guest, Miss Beth Lilly, EV Ambassador. This is Episode 5, recorded on September 27, 2018. All right, well, thanks for tuning in to already episode five of my audio podcast here from the EV Revolution show. I'm Kenneth Bocor. This is kind of a unique taping that I'm doing here. I happen to be in Europe at this time of year in the lovely town of Ghent in Belgium. I've uh, been here a couple of times, and I reached out to a very well-known EV enthusiast and ambassador, Miss Beth Lilly, to join me. Welcome, Beth. How are you? Hi, Ken. I'm great. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for trekking over here from uh, about an hour away drive into Ghent in Belgium, and I really appreciate you coming out, and I'm glad you could take the time out of your busy schedule to sit and do a show. Now, folks are probably hearing a lot of background noise. That's because we're, we're in a bar in this lovely boutique hotel that's just been renovated. It's an old historic hotel. If you Google the 1898 post, if I've got that right, yeah, that's right. in downtown Ghent, you'll find, you'll find everything you need to know about the hotel. But they have this lovely cocktail bar, and I figured that we, we would have a, a drink and talk about EVs, and you guys can get to know everything about Beth and what she does as an EV ambassador. You're also a motorsport um, and an automotive operations experience and motorsports. You're an adventurer, so I guess you're like Spider-Man. You climb walls and all I this wish. kind of stuff. You wish. Yeah. Somebody and needs to teach me to do that. <laughs> exactly. And I'll do envi- it. <laughs> an environmental uh, activist too. Is that correct? Yeah, that's Excellent. right. Excellent. Well, thank you for taking the time. Tell our, tell our view is a little bit more about you because I, I, I we met at, at Silver in um, uh, Milton Keys for the first time when I went to Fully Charged. That's where we met and. Uh, Talking to you about EVs, you just my mind melted as you were talking because you're fascinating to listen to. Uh, so tell our, tell our folks a little bit about yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm glad your mind melted rather than the, the intenseness. Like no, it's, it's fascinating, <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, so um, well, anybody that knows me or doesn't know me, the, the I guess the thing to know is that I'm really really passionate about yes. promoting electric vehicles. Um, I also am known to get quite passionate about getting annoyed about public transport as well. Um, on a lot of podcasts recently when people talk about mass adoption of EVs, but we won't talk too much about that. So it's not just about the electric vehicles, but um, yeah, so my background was, was in motorsport. Um, uh, that was that was a passion from a young age. I, I, I grew up right by Silverstone, actually, where where, where you and I met. Ken. Oh right. So yeah. um, it wasn't it wasn't. So you can hear the race cars, you know, buzzing along. I, yeah. I can I can hear yeah. it when I open nice. my doors. Actually, at yeah. the moment, it's uh, it's quite fun to be able to hear what's going on. I know we talk about EVs, but you know that, that's it's a sentimental sound to be able to hear Silverstone from yeah. from my garden. Um, so yeah, I couldn't really ignore it. And then I went to school pretty close to Silverstone as well uh, for the last couple of years of school, and uh, I was just amazed by it. I, actually, somebody bought me a, a supercar magazine. I think when I was really, really small. I don't know why. I don't know why someone bought it for me, but I just became absolutely fixated. I I saw. I think it was when the, about when the Aston Martin Vanquish came out, and probably the, the the Lamborghini Diablo. And I was just looking at it and thinking, this is this is amazing. Yeah. The, these things are so incredible and years later now it's kind of part of my job so it feels like a bit of a dream has been achieved I suppose even even though there's lots more to achieve well, exactly because you're so young so you have a long way to go that's fantastic you know to be able to use that and that um, knowledge and passion that you have from that industry and bring it into a new trend which basically EVs are still you know kind of shiny new things on the market we're only starting to really see adoption you know, kick off in that so be able to take that knowledge um, and experience that you have in the ice side of things um, into the EV, the EV world so what have your experiences been so far with EVs and, and I know your most recent one is charge charge circle but yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about that um, yeah so so recently we drove four different electric cars to, to Nordcap which is uh, the most northern point of, of 
Europe, okay. uh, right at the very tip of Norway. Wow. It, 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 came, it came as an idea from about two years ago because it, it was kind of a pilgrimage for a lot of Tesla drivers because if you, if you zoom out of your Tesla map in, in your Model S, then you can see the superchargers go all the way up Norway. So it was like, oh, tempting, I can see the path. That it's almost like Tesla want me to do this yeah, journey. They want you, they're, calling, <laughs> they're, they're beckoning you, please yeah, drive. Yeah, and there's yes. been a, cool, a few cool people that have, have gone up there and, and actually Model S's and Roadsters and uh, but not so, I, I, it is happening, but not so much in the other EVs. So in, in typical fashion of making it more challenging, we decided to do it in four completely different EVs, including now the, the eight-year-old Roadster. Mm -hmm. The one that we used is eight years old. Yes. And um, a 30 kilowatt leaf, so not the mm -hmm. new leaf. Yep. And an i3 and a Model S kind of a support car, because nice. we knew that the Model S could could do the journey. Yeah. Other people have done it, and, and the Roadster has done it before, but I don't know if, if things have changed since then, but it was very difficult in the Roadster now without without the charging and with the fact that we had the Roadster needing the Type 2 adapter and two other cars that also wanted often the same charging pole as yes. such. So it was right. very much a, a, strategic, a strategic puzzle. That's an interesting one to try and say. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the thing that was really difficult, I think, and the initial thing that came off is like a lot of the guys that came with us hadn't driven EVs before. So they, they imagined that we were going to do this beautiful convoy. And it was it was the source of quite a lot of the, the initial arguments, I say, like team arguments, was that they thought we were going to have this panoramic image of four cars driving all the way. and. I was like, this is not possible with the fact that all the cars have different charging requirements and range and things. So it quickly kind of shattered, sadly, their dreams that we were going to um, have this constant montage of cars driving through different scenery. That's a good, that's a good point you bring up, yeah, yeah, because they all have different, you know, they all operate differently. And it's not like a traditional ice car where you can kind of all go on a convoy. You do have to think a little bit more when you're talking about not only just EVs, but different, different models within the EV realm. It was, it was really interesting because we had to quickly build a tactic and yeah. uh, obviously the Roadster actually, I'm, I, I'm, I, I am like a self-professed Roadster queen of eco driving so one of the days I got... That's, I'm going to call you the queen of Roadsters, yeah, there you go, I love it. I, I, really, I really think Elon needs to acknowledge my Roadster achievements. Elon, I'm, if you're I, listening, which I know you're not, please. <laughs> I've nearly broken the, the Roadster record, like unofficially. I came That's so right. close. I've got, I think I got nearly 700 kilometers, so, 650, 700 kilometers out of it one wow. day. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was a lot of regen and hills. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not going to pretend, but on, on an average basis, I get about 400 kilometers out of it, nice. which is uh, which is a good 100 to, 50, 100 to 50 kilometers more than. Uh, my friends yeah. so I'm like haha. Oh. So you know how to drive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've also had the zero of shame quite a few times as well. But but the, the strategy with that one was obviously it's got a decent range yes. but it takes a, a zillion years to charge because we're on a type two adapter. Yes. So you needed we needed to send the roadster ahead of everybody and then just leave it to charge while everyone caught up, otherwise it would get behind and frequently it did get behind because we didn't get a charge overnight or things like that and it, it was always catching up. Right. Whereas the, the leaf and the I three have kind of a similar range-ish. I mean, the, the i3 is a little bit better, but not much. So we, we could kind of put those on a kind of almost relay tactic where one was tagging in the other one and then going ahead 150 kilometers and meeting each other, depending on the terrain and, and things right. like that. And how long was the range? Uh, how long was the journey itself? How many kilometers? Uh, in total, we did 10,000 kilometers. 10,000 kilometers, yeah, it's, it's so not, about 6,600 miles. Something yeah, like it's, that, yeah, right? something yeah. like that. It, it's not, if you, did it, if you did it literally, it would be a bit less but we yep. did a few detours on the trip to take some pretty roads and yes I saw the one you had to go around a, a reindeer there yeah, I saw that <laughs> video you posted that yeah. was quite comical he was giving you attitude like hey it's my road I'm not yeah. getting out of here I and love it the funny thing is like the last I think the last 200 kilometers that was pretty much the story every five minutes in, yeah. in Norway that's the one thing nobody had warned me though. about like the nature was the nature rules in Norway yeah. and yes. you if a reindeer is in the road they do not move for you you just have to wait and I, yeah that video I was trying to go around him and then he was coming my way yeah. and yeah it was, was really like fun purposefully blocking you yeah, saying, I'm absolutely. not ready to let you buy yet so. and that happened yeah. that happened a lot wow. and, uh, and the, the moose were the same actually I didn't okay. I didn't manage to catch any moose on videos but there was yeah. one that was almost kind of waiting for me to approach and uh, you know I was in the tiny roadster so not only am I a, like a lover of all animals yeah. that I was going to slow down anyway but yeah. also um, I was quite scared that the moose was quite big 
big and my car was pretty small. Well, and, we are. And he did exactly what I thought it was going to do and just went out right in front of me, like looking at me with its nose, yep. like flopping. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that, that was a great video. I love that one. So that's, uh, and you did this primarily just to create, again, more awareness and buzz about the capabilities of, of EVs. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's, that's correct. It was, a, it was a project that we'd been thinking about for a long time. We wanted to link up electric vehicles with the ocean awareness. Okay. And uh, oh yeah. Yeah. So that was Good. that was kind of an important thing. We've been doing EV adventures, but we wanted to uh, connect it with something that was a tangible thing that was in the general public's mind. Because yes. I think a lot of the time, because. I am part of the EV community. We all forget that those that are not in it, it's not really their thoughts on a day-to-day -day basis. That's right. Whereas yeah. bigger issues, I say bigger issues, I mean, it's all part of the thing, but bigger bigger issues in the minds of the general public, such as ocean and CO2 emissions, that's something that can really impact a, um, a bigger amount of people. And of course, there is a real important link between electric vehicles and the ocean when you're talking about oil spills and plastic creation and plastic pollution. Yeah. So we thought it would be pretty cool to show people how they're connected up and link up some people that are into ocean awareness yeah. and teach them about electric cars and teach the EV people about the ocean. Uh, that's brilliant because a lot of people forget that it's not just about clean air that we're talking about, you know, taking smog away from Shanghai or LA or, or something like that. It, there's all these other things that are going yeah. on that, that climate change, you know, is being impacted by and causing other ripple effects uh, in, in different ecosystems and different environments. So uh, brilliant that you're doing that, you know, plus all the floating stuff that's out there and you know, just on and on. So so you yeah. know, that, that, that could be another hour-long show just, yeah. just talking about that. But, but that's great that you're bringing that awareness. And um, now I understand personally, so uh, you have a Roadster that's kind of a company vehicle, but you have a Model S yourself, right? Yeah. 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 And you've had that for a few years now? Yeah. So I yeah. I began driving electric cars, I think, in 2015. Okay. So you're a bit of a um, pioneer. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm, I mean, I'm lucky because I've... I've worked with various companies, that means I've, I've driven a lot of things and I've had a lot of loaner cars, yeah. like long-term loaners uh, over the years. And also because I do delve into journalism from time to time, yeah. I, I, I get press vehicles. So I'm, I'm, reason, I'm, not, I'm not on the top of any manufacturer's list for, for car drives, unfortunately. I wish I was, but I, I know... You're not the top gear of uh, EVs, right? No, yeah. no, but they I'm need, not either, so don't worry no, about it. No, but they need, they need to sort that because they keep mm -hmm. giving them the cars before us and they... I know, and these, <laughs> these guys uh, just don't know what they're saying. Exactly. Yeah, I, 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 um, I remember they did something heinous to the roadster, but I don't yeah. remember what it was now, but oh, I think man. I think it broke down or yeah. something. Which, you know, the roadster really was a pioneering, pioneering car. It's an incredible car. But yeah, yep. I've been having loads of fun with the roadster recently. Yep. Um, at the moment, um, driving the Model S, the signature edition. So that's a really old Model S with 250,000 kilometers on the nice. clock. Um, Excellent. Good for you. So that's uh, that's pretty cool because it's it's a reasonably high mileage uh, Model S, and it's nice to be able to crush people's uh, crush, crush people's dreams. Yeah. <laughs> no, but crush people's uh, thought like myths about the fears and stuff and about doubt long, about long term yeah. longevity I, and right. viability of, of, of the batteries etc because yeah. because I mean to be honest like with my combustion cars in the past I certainly never had a car that was at that kind of mileage so I think like normally in my mind around a hundred thousand then that in terms of miles that in was miles, uh, yeah. that was yeah. pretty much an end of a life for, for yeah. a lot of cars you can, you can push um, you know diesel now quarter of a million kilometers, three, four hundred thousand, so some of the, the, the diesels that are out there you can push them, but yeah, yeah certainly. Not the cars I was driving. But no, not the was, ones you were driving. That was back when I was driving like hot hatches. <laughs> exactly, I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> so, so, so it definitely wasn't. <laughs> nice. Now, um, so I, I wanted to, you know, I don't really have any new top news stories to talk about, usually yeah. I try to bring something into to the podcast, but you know, since we're here in Europe, I wanted to kind of keep this a little bit European flavors to a point, and wanted to get your opinion on how you've seen the EV market grow in Europe. I mean, in North America, we've seen this exponential curve that's just starting to take off from an adoption and you know, from a availability, from all these kind of elements. Are you, you, you guys seeing the same, same thing in Europe? I mean, I'm reporting on it, so I know the answer to that question, but I wanted to get your viewpoints on yeah, that. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. It's 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 massively positive. Yeah. I, every, every month, even, I see more people 
beginning to join the bandwagon. And yes. it, in some ways, I think it's, I, I was, I was uh, thinking about this earlier, it's a little bit scary because uh, we're a community right now and probably anybody that's listening to us at the moment in 2018, yeah. <laughs> it, you're probably part of the community and, and in the future when mass adoption happens, it's not going to be this nice little community yeah. anymore because we're not going to be special anymore. So the fact that I'm starting to feel that already is, right. you know, it's a good, it's yeah. a greater good. Uh, but it, from an industry point of view, it's, it's also a little bit scary because um, there's a lot of people that have jobs on the basis that uh, this is a new piece of tech, but now uh, as people from, from the old way of thinking are now realizing that they need to change and, and move with the times, then they're, they're starting to eat up those jobs as well. So yep. um, even from a journalistic perspective, the reason why I ever began writing about EVs or presenting anything about EVs was because I was working in the field and there wasn't that many people at the time that knew what they were talking about, right. at, at least, yeah. or pretending to, whatever, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> imposter syndrome. But um, there, there wasn't people out there that were interested enough or willing to do it. And now now the big guys, the big guns are, are into EVs and jumping on it. So for, for us, maybe like it's a little bit of a, of a scary times because it's like, where, where does that leave our, the early adopters? But for, for the world, it's it's really important. And like, I can really see it. And even, especially the last year, like people, people in my life that are not connected to my work are now finally going, oh, I understand the thing that you've been talking about Good. for four years. That's progress. And, and that's that's really big. Like I, I have family members that will now send me messages to my phone. There was an electric car on the news. Like this is this is this is what you do. Did you see it? Did you know that that Tesla do a thing? And I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> you, you know it very well. <laughs> I do that know. Thing, Nissan exactly. have an electric car. Did you know that, Beth? I'm like, right. yes. <laughs> but you know the fact that people are taking an interest now. Good. The the main thing the main thing that's really important now is because people are starting starting to take an interest. Uh, us early adopters and uh, EV journalists yeah. or people that work in the industry need to make sure that the facts are right and that people are educated in the right way. And I think all of us have seen there's a lot of myths going out there. And we, mm -hmm. we've talked about a couple of these, how yeah. uh, people are getting the wrong impression or people don't understand some things uh, about electric cars. And in general, people are resistant to change. We're, we're creatures of habit. Yes. So I think education is really, really important. And from from people that are not too biased or too pushy about the subject as well, people that are willing to listen and, and work out how an EV can fit into someone's life. Exactly, and you know, it, it's brilliant that you'll be that you can do that education, that outreach as part of your work as well, and be able to you know, to do that based on what you do. And, and that's one of the reasons I do what I do is just, it's purely for the outreach and the education to again let people know, you know that. You know, it's not so bad to charge your EV, and you know, really, it only takes a matter of seconds to charge your EV because all you do is plug it in, you walk away, and you unplug it. You know, when you're ready to go on your next trip, um, or if you're fast charging, you go have something to eat or whatever the case is. You come back in a certain, you know, an hour or whatever. And you know, when you compare that to you know a gasoline or a petrol pump where you're sitting there for you know five minutes or ten minutes. And, and everything you're exposed to during that, you know, there could be long-term health and all kinds of other things that people don't think about. So, so the, the whole education is part of what I do. It's brilliant that you're able to, to merge those two together and, and, you know, tell people about the reliability of EVs and that they really don't be afraid of them. They may not be for you, but yeah. you know, for every person. But they're certainly viable cars. I wanted to talk about some of the. We were we were talking about this a little bit uh, before we started taping here, and just a quick uh, a quick message again. I'll apologize for for folks uh, for the background noise here. <laughs> we're in a nice cocktail bar in the 1898 Post Hotel, uh, so a lot of people enjoying themselves. But it was a, I thought it was a nice venue to to meet up with Beth and, and have a great conversation that we're having here. Um, I wanted to talk about. Uh, Certainly the Model 3. I mean, we've had it now in North America. I can't drive more than a couple of kilometers now at, from home every day without seeing a Model 3. So they're almost out there all over the place. And I know you guys are, are just itching. You're, <laughs> you're, you're, you know, you're got, like that dog who wants to be let in the house and you're scratching on the door. Let me in, let me in. Where's my Model 3? So, you know, right-hand drive, uh, we know that's going to be a while. But there, there was some news recently about Tesla ramping up or looking to gear up production for the Model 3 for European deliveries for non-right-hand drive. What's your thought on that? Are you excited about that? What, what are you hearing? What are you seeing out there from, uh, from so, people's reactions? 
Model 3, um, so this is an interesting topic for me. Uh, I think I think I'm repeating myself from uh, an interview I gave really recently, okay. and I can't remember who it was for. So if you if you've listened to that one, I apologise because I'm going to say the same thing That's again. Okay. But initially, the the whole proposition of the Model Three, I'll be really honest. I'm obviously I'm a huge Tesla fan. I have a Tesla necklace at home yeah. um, just to reward myself for driving a roads to 10,000 kilometres. So nice. so don't don't uh, don't hate me, Tesla fans. But yeah. when I have, initially saw the Model Three, I. I wasn't excited by the prospect. The reason being is I had reservations about the price and that for the money it was still it was still it was coming as a low cost EV but it wasn't really a low cost mm -hmm. EV. Correct. Um, and one of the big things that I'm championing for is if and I say this in every interview is that if we're going to be stood in front of you telling you you need to drive an EV but they're not affordable yeah. like that's that's not okay that's not an okay situation to live in because we can't be saying that uh, people in society are not doing a good enough job for our planet because they can't afford to make a decision right. and so when I saw the Model 3 I instantly my brain went well you know this is not going to be the price it says it is once you add in all the all the things that to me are probably necessities mm -hmm. So that was, uh, that was initially my reaction. And then when I compared it to the price of things like the, the Nissan Leaf, I was like, you know, it's, it, it's not really interesting price-wise. And by the time I've added on all of the things, I've got a Model S. So where, where, do, a debate as well. where yeah. do I feel about it? Yeah. So yeah. this was my first reaction. So an, initially I wasn't positive. And when I looked at it, I wasn't even sure, like aesthetically, if I liked it or not. I really love the look of the S. I'm, the S for me is one of the most beautiful cars ever. Actually, I really love it. it you know, um, I wasn't sold on the Model Three, and then I went to, I think it was Geneva Motor Show a couple of years ago, and I think they had one of the first ones in Europe, and I sat in it and with the minimalist dashboard yep. and nothing in front of me, and I, and my uh, my Model Three thoughts plummeted even further. I just hated it. Yeah. I hated it. I like really didn't like it. Really didn't like it. Since then, I've had a massive turnaround. <laughs> I was going to say it, but there's a but coming <laughs> yeah, up there. Yeah, there is a but. Yeah. And, and I'll be really honest, yeah. like, um, I haven't had much experience with the Model 3, obviously, because I'm in Europe, unfortunately. And I, I would really love to, to get over stateside and, and have some so you fun. Haven't, you haven't uh, been able to drive no, one here. No, I know that exactly. they were doing some road shows, but yeah, very limited. Exactly. I've, I've yeah. had very limited experiences with it. But I. I, I mean, I still have some reservations about the price. Mm -hmm. I, I can't. Yep. I can't. I, I agree. I can't be like sit here and tell you it's a low cost car because people that are looking for a low cost car are going to look for something for a thousand, two thousand on on Gumtree or eBay or when, wherever yep. people are buying cars now. Um, but the performance and the reactions people have had behind the wheel and the fact that so many people have been transformed by this car. I yeah. can't deny it and now I'm ridiculously excited for it and now I kind of really want one. <laughs> well, it, it, you know, it definitely is a game changer from that perspective. And again, you know, I, I, I fell into that, but from the opposite, you know, when I saw it, I was enamored and, and obviously, but I was too hooked on the low price. And, and you know, I think my viewers know that I, I had to make an accelerated purchase as, as did the Trevor at the time when he got his Model X in December of last year. Because we were, we were certainly myself, we were very motivated by the local incentives that we had, which are now gone. So you yeah. know, I had to do what I had to do from a, from a budgetary perspective. But you hit the nail on the head. I think people are, are seeing that car is transforming them yeah. in, in ways that they didn't think they could. And you know, you see all the feedback is so positive. Yes, it's going to have issues because Tesla is still a young company, and that's what happens. But you know, the amount of sales that, that they're, you know, the reservations, it just it really showed that. But it's viable. But it's you're right. It's not a true mass market EV yet. You know, yeah. You got to get down to that twenty five thousand dollar range, yeah. twenty thousand to really, you know, and cost parity is a way away, and those kind of prices are maybe five to ten years away. But they're going to come. So uh, the Model Three is definitely uh, what I tell folks is I view it as there was there was this smoldering kind of fire. You know, you had the Nissan Leaf, which was selling globally and doing okay as as a "Quote unquote mass market because it was relatively affordable. Yeah. You had some, you know, Mitsubishi, IMEV, and a couple of others that were out there. So the smoldering fire, and then Tesla came along and dumped a bucket of gasoline on it, and it flared up, and it caught the attention of the world with three, four hundred, five hundred thousand reservations 
for a car that wasn't going to be ready in two years. And that just blew people's minds away. You know, that, that even exceeded the iPhone experience at Apple stores where people lined up around the blocks, right, to, to get their iPhone, uh, the new iPhone come out. You know, it was that kind of technological shift, you know, that the paradigm shift in the whole thought process. Yeah, absolutely. That changed the dynamics and really started the catalyst of, of EVs could be an everyday car. So we, you know, we talked about some of the manufacturers still kind of slow, you know, to the game. They're kind of a little bit more compliance oriented than than others. So uh, great viewpoints, and I really hope that it comes to Europe as early as you know maybe the Q1 or Q2 of next year. Yeah, and you know now just to spite me, I'm going to regret not having a reservation. I can well, tell. Well, apparently you won't need one now because I just read an article that you can actually get. You know, you want it in days, you can get one in days now. Apparently, they're cranking them out so. Fast. Fast. So, really? Wow. So that leads me to believe, and I'll sidebar a sec, that a lot of the reservations were for more geared towards the base model. Yeah. Because if they've, if they've already got to a point where they've delivered enough of the long range versions and people are sitting now on their reservations waiting for the standard range, to me that means that the majority yeah. of the orders that came in were for standard range. And that makes sense because that $35,000 was a price that caught people's attention. It wasn't sixty thousand dollars or fifty-five thousand, no. right? Which is what a long-range version with yeah, a couple absolutely. of options is going to end up costing you, right? Depending on what currency you're in. So yeah, I still, I mean, I still don't know if by the time if I was to get a, a Model Three, um, which I now like the look of, by the way, <laughs> yeah. had a complete change around. But um, I still don't know by the time I'd yeah. put in what I'd want out of it if it would be worth it compared Versus to a Model S. Exactly. So, but but yeah, I think you know it's 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 a game changer of yeah. a car, and yeah. and so yeah, I've been totally turned around, and I think. Um, I think that was it was really important and yep. everyone was saying the Model 3 would be an important car and I was like well in the UK it's not going to be here so how is it going to be important and and um, but but it's captured the imagination of such a huge amount of people yes. and people have been following the story and the story of Tesla and all the PR that's been there good or bad um, it's it's all it you know, it, it's, it's kind of the apple of, uh, it's the apple of, of the automotive industry, isn't it? Exactly. Well, I mean, all the other manufacturers, like you said, are now involved in the game. It's caught their attention. I mean, you know, Jaguar has, you know, released and announced the iPace. I, I believe it's selling already in Europe now. Yep. If yeah, not, it is. You can buy it. Um, I went to a Canadian launch event uh, earlier this week, which, which will be on one of my future um, uh, shows, uh, the, the video shows. Uh, we'll do a segment on that, but you know, lovely car. Um, what do you think of it? You've had a chance to look at it, yeah, drive yeah. around. Yeah, I've driven the iPace. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm. I really love the iPace. So I was excited that Jaguar were, were, were yeah. bringing something out because they, you know, they they don't do things uh, haphazard. Yeah, they that, think that's, about it. Yeah, yeah they. they they, and, and when I when I was talking to them, they were they were putting thought behind it, and it was it was well thought out rather than an yes. apology car, which yeah, <laughs> which right. is what I call lots of lots of the other EVs that we see that nobody really wants to sell. Yeah. Um, and you know, for for a brand like Jag to be doing something like that, it was it was important. You know, yeah. they're they're a luxury brand. They they've got some cachet. Um, so I thought it was really important. I the car itself, it's it's a pleasure to drive. I really yeah. enjoy it. I, I like the car a lot. I was the one disappointment for me was the towing limitation on the car. Right, we were talking um, about because that, yeah. obviously at at the moment. I mean, without really destroying your warranty, the X is the only tangible tow car at the moment. Um, I don't know actually about the Kona. Do you know? Uh, I don't, but I, I don't. It's not a big, big chassis vehicle, so I don't no, expect it to have I a don't very think high so rating either. either so. Because um, you need some structure behind exactly, that, Exactly. Um, not just power. But obviously so. the Model X uh, can, can, can tow a substantial amount. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, so I was a bit disappointed that the I-Pace could only tow uh, 750 kilograms, yeah. and um, and actually, for me, that was that was kind of a bit of a deal breaker. And I, I'm, 
I guess I'm feeling the fed upness of all the SUVs, yeah. like yeah. like a lot of other people are. But but as I say to a lot of people that keep commenting on on my articles when they're complaining about SUVs, yep. I mean clearly that's what the customers are asking for yep. because the manufacturers are not making them for nothing. It's, it's frustrating that it we're is. getting a load of SUVs, but I, you know that's yep. I don't it, you know that's in the hands of us, the customer, and we need to send a different message if that's. That's the message. But yeah, I think it's a, it's a great car. What I'm really excited for is that they're going to race them. Yes. So I found that out by ja Jaguar that uh, they're going to do an, uh, an i-series, i-pace series. Mm. Uh, E-series, I think they're going to call it or something like that. The, so. uh, the, the e-trophy, yeah. Yes. So stay tuned for that. That'll be exciting to see that 20 cars or something like yeah, that. They're, they're yeah, they're testing right now at yeah. Silverstone. Nice. Like, oh, okay. uh, actually, um, as, as, I, as I speak, yeah. they're testing. Um, and then they're following nice. part of the Formula E calendar. Yes. But I'm just, I just think, you know, cause, because they're big cars, as well, they, yep. they, it's going to be the, the closest thing to kind of smashy touring cars that we've seen <laughs> in electric racing car. That's it, right. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I won't spoil my next show, but you know, I was certainly impressed with the car being able to spend a little bit more time than I that I yeah. could during fully charged live back in June. Um, it definitely is not a Model S. It's not a Model X. No. Um, I think it's between a three and an S from a size perspective. Yeah, that's the S probably is bigger about right. interior. But it's bigger than a three. But it's very, it's a very substantial car, and I'll yeah. leave it at that because that was my impression. It's just, it's got substance to it, and all the other stuff that you mentioned earlier, Beth, about about the Jaguar brand and what they bring to the table. That it's their thought out. You know, yeah. they don't react. They try to lead, right? So, so they bring out products to do that. But for towing capacities, um, the Audi e-tron that just was announced a week or so, I'm actually very excited about that car, yeah. even though Audi's late to the game. What's your comments on that? I guess you watched that and had a chance yeah, to... Yeah, uh, I, I did watch okay. it. Um, yeah, yeah I, I was I was a lot more impressed by the e-tron than yeah. I was by the, the EQ, the Mercedes. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Which, and, and I think their launches were maybe a week or so apart, yeah, I think. from a boring launch um, perspective, the EQ was very high. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Scale. But, you know, the e-tron, the e-tron is exci exciting. Wow, it's just got really noisy in here. <laughs> well, you know, the bartender's doing his, uh, his mixing, <laughs> cocktail mixing. Um, so. And, you know, of course, the exciting thing about the e-tron is it's being built in Belgium, in Brussels. So yep. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing that roll out as a production car. I mean, it's still a long way away is the it problem. Is. And it's been a long Next time. Year, yeah. It's been a long time coming as well. Well, I mean, I read today that they've already got over ten thousand pre-orders for the e-tron yes. in Europe. Yeah, I've Actually, read that sorry, as well. that's a global number. So that's pretty good for it being just a week. I mean, it's yeah. not three hundred thousand like like you know Tesla was a Model Three, but it's it's interesting that we're now saying, gee, only ten thousand. Where you know before the Model Three, ten thousand yeah. pre-orders on something that's not available for a while would have been. Outstanding. Absolutely. Two years ago, three years. And ago. they've just announced as well that they won't be selling the e-tron in their dealerships, which yeah. is quite a significant statement from. So it's an from online type Tesla-ish yeah, experience. Then. Yeah. So that, I mean, I guess it's a it's a combo of them trying to yeah. do 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 a Tesla, mm -hmm. um, yep. to be to be honest, and also I, I suppose um, the, the dealership thing for a lot of EVs hasn't been working. Yes. Um, the I the agree. traditional model because obviously. Uh, the financial gains don't really make sense from, I mean, my, my limited understanding of the business side of yeah. dealerships, but they make a lot of their money back on the service packages and that side yes, of things. Is, yeah. And obviously that's not, um, that's not massively interesting for the EVs. And so uh, they're not particularly keen on selling them. And also the sales proposition of an EV is different for, for, a, for an, a, conduct, a, a traditional combustion engine car. So it, there's kind of a, an education that needs to take place if the dealerships are gonna successfully Sell, sell EVs and most yep. of them kind of you know you're changing the status quo for them so they don't really like it um, so I you know I understand why Audi have made that decision uh, in the long term it's a win-win for them yep. uh, I don't know if the dealers are gonna be massively happy about it but uh, We'll see, but you're absolutely right. They are very Tesla-ish, like in their approach. I mentioned this on my last show when I talked about the yep. e-tron release that, you know, even even the whole charging infrastructure and the one card access that they're providing with owners with uh, when they purchase that car is basically a book out of Tesla's you know page of, you know, in this case the charging infrastructure is being built, so it'll be there when the car comes out, so you can take advantage of the, the faster you know the faster chargers um, and and giving 
some free charging with the car. So, yeah. so they've learned that that model works, it's attractive to buyers, and it'll make getting into an EV ownership experience that much easier for people, especially SUVs where that marketplace is traditionally more, we're gonna take longer trips, we're gonna go camping, we're gonna pull a trailer, we're gonna do something with it, and you know, the e-tron has a 4,000 pound towing capacity, yeah, so absolutely. it fits right in that model. So yeah, it'll be brilliant. I'm excited about that. Yeah, really and you know, Audi, Audi build quality. Quality. There's there's a reason why people buy Audi, and I yeah. I think that they will fulfill on their promise. So I, I think yeah. it will be it will be a solid car, and probably it will convert a lot of people that would be normally driving an Audi um, onto EV. So I think it's it's a positive. Uh, I guess we'll just have to see. We may see you in one one day. Who knows? Towing your caravan around. <laughs> we'll I definitely that. don't have a caravan. Well, you might get one then Maybe if you I can tow 4,000. I'll get, I'll get the VW uh, camper van, oh, electric, the ID. The, the ID Buzz. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of cute. That is cute. I, you know, eventually they'll, bring, they'll, they'll build one. Yeah. Oh no, that, there's a big there's a big list of all the electric cars. Yeah. <laughs> there was, it's a laundry list. Yeah. Well, how's the, the Hyundai Kona or the Kia Nero? Uh, Nero fit into that. I mean, I'm excited about those cars. I'm a bit more excited about the Nero to be honest with you because it's a slightly bigger, yes. but still a compact SUV. I think that might going to be the the, the Kona is a little smallish yeah. for what I see, but again, it's going to fit those markets. Uh, you know, battery they're hitting all the right buttons. You know, you got selection of battery sizes, you got active thermal, you got all this kind of stuff. My only concern is production availability. I don't know if they're going to build enough. Yeah, that the the Hyundai and the the Kia are very very interesting. Yep. Hyundai are a brand that I've always been a big fan of. Mm -hmm. um, they build real quality. Even way back to the Pony days. If you okay. Remember that? Uh, well, Maybe not. <laughs> no, yeah. but like you know, in the recent years, Hyundai have built cars consistently with decent quality, yes. but oh, um, at, but at really low prices. Mm -hmm. Like even them, even their kind of more sporty op options. I remember, God, back when the the, the Hyundai Coupe was a popular car with mm -hmm. like young people, and it, I think that was about fifteen thousand pounds, and that was a really solid, well equipped, uh, yeah. well equipped yep. like sports car. It was it was good fun for yep. like track days and things. So. Um, I really like the Ionic. The Ionic, Ionic's a great car. If you can find one, if you can, if you can get Hyundai to sell you an we have Ionic, the same in North America. Yeah, I mean, I mean, not, I'm not talking about the hybrid or the, yes, the, the fully electric. The fully, I'm talking about the fully electric. Yeah. If you can find one and um, buy it, because it's it's an amazing car and at a good price. And I've had I've had some really good experiences with the with the Ionic. I just hope that the same thing doesn't happen with the Kona that that's kind of happened with the Ionic. But I know I I've now heard I think. Uh, Today, actually, a couple of people on my Twitter feed have now received their their Kona's. Um, oh, good. I, I have seen one, um, and I've not sat inside one or driven one yet, but I saw one back in the Brussels Motor Show, nice. I think, uh, last year. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm excited, but I, I like you. I'm, I'm more interested in the in the Nero for the for the bigger size. I, I think size. that's going to because it's not as big as your traditional SUV, but it's going to hit a better sweet spot. Yeah, I think for I think a lot so. of people, you know, because the you, you get you know a couple in uh, two kids and a dog, and and you know the Nero um, is a little tight for that with stuff, right? And it's the boot space isn't there, you yeah. know. So you go up a little bit more on the on the Nero. I think that and the price point I think is going to be there. Um, I think that's going to hit the spot now. Renault Zoe, I talked about it. It's it's a, one of the best selling EVs here in, in Europe. Um, they're doing something right there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't. I haven't heard much about future plans from Renault no, recently. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm hoping there's things going. But yeah, the, the the Zoe is certainly a popular car in the UK and in Europe. Yeah. See a lot of them about. Uh, and and you you have to commend Renault for being one of the early adopters from from the manufacturing point of yep. view and and not only that but they built a range I mean they had the Twizy which whatever you say about it it's got a purpose and it was a decent price and it was it's fun if you put them on the carting circuit which we definitely if haven't you can done use it, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but no I can see I can see practical application for it as well I wouldn't I wouldn't own one myself because it's not useful for me in my day-to-day -day life but it's it's certainly useful for a lot of businesses and yeah. inner city people especially yeah. in London etc careers that kind of yeah, stuff yeah absolutely I mean, certainly a lot of application and then yeah. of course they brought out the van as well the yeah. um the Kangoo yes um, so 
I'm, I'm not sure about timelines, but they were certainly one of the one of the first uh, to bring out kind of a range of electric vehicles and to show that they were going in this direction. They were. So, um, Just yeah. too bad we can't get them in North America because I think they would, at least in Canada, I think yeah. Zoe would do really well because it's we're big on some subcompacts in Canada. Right. It's yeah. a big market for us. Um, the U.S. maybe not as well. I shouldn't say that. There are big markets there, but again, it, it's they have you know ten times the population, so it's a larger cross section. But um, it's a good car, and it's just too bad that, that we don't have it in Canada. Hopefully, yeah. maybe Renault might eventually bring something in. We'll see. Um, BMW i3. We talked about it before we started taping. I mean, a lot of those out there. You can find one of those quite easy. Yeah, and you can find them secondhand at a very good price as well. Definitely, yeah. if you if you're interested in i3, I really really recommend getting them secondhand. If you're and if you're in the UK or Europe, there's a few, I, I, I don't know about uh, North America and Canada, but there's a few really good uh, dealers that will source you your, your secondhand i3. And I've had, uh, over over the years, I've had three i3s, um, be not because I've done anything terrible for them, but because they've been uh, long-term loaners from BMW Baylux and are at 30,000 kilometers, they take them back. So uh, okay. that's, hence, every time I've hit 30,000 kilometers on them, right. they have to trade it in for another one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the i3. The, now compared to a lot of the other cars I drive, the range is not um, up there, but in terms of driving pleasure, I have to say BMW range is definitely up there as one of the most pleasurable cars to drive. And it should drive. because it's a BMW. Exactly. So it, sh it should have that driving experience. And lastly, I mean, I'm wearing my Nissan Leaf shirt tonight, you know, yep. uh, in honor of my Leaf. But the 2018 Leaf, I think, is making a big impact in continuing the momentum for EV sales down a little bit more into that mass adoption market. You know, rapid gate or no rapid gate, you know, we talked about the, about the use cases there and the viability that... I think you and I both agree that rapid gate really is, is, a, is an issue from a mass adoption perspective. But no. uh, how are you seeing the Nissan Leaf here in Europe and, and what's your opinion? The, well, it's, the 2018 I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's, it's well, last time I checked the, the stats, it's the, it's the most popular electric car, so we, we see a lot of them, and, and it is, obviously, from a price point, one of the most interesting cars, especially if you're talking about really low price when you're looking at second-hand old Nissan Leaf. Yes. It's, it's becoming something that uh, people yes. can afford when they're young, people on very low incomes can now start to afford, especially on the, on the leasing thing, which is very popular here in the UK anyway. Yes. Um, so I, I have a big love for the Leaf. Obviously, we drove the 30 kilowatt Nissan Leaf on our Charge the Circle trip. Yep. So that wasn't the new Leaf. That was the old Leaf. And uh, that was kindly given to us by the um, the EV Center in Milson Keynes, yep. or loaned right. to us for the trip. Yep. And we absolutely fell in love with that car. Everybody that drove it loved it. I mean, it, it, it was not an ideal car to drive 10,000 kilometers in. I'm not going to <laughs> I can see that. Not going to pretend to anybody that it was, and it was certainly tired yeah. by the end of its journey. But yeah. um, everybody was kind of enchanted by, by the Leaf, uh, despite the fact that it was certainly not the most prestigious car of our lineup, or you know, and it was certainly the cheapest car of our yeah. lineup. Um, Gee, you almost described me, tired and enchanted. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. The, no. the, new leaf, the new Leaf did bring it up a notch yep. for me. Um, I, I know some people love the look of the old Leaf. Yep. Um, it's, I think since the trip, I've changed my mind a little bit, but the old look for somebody that uh, is very much in the motorsports world, it wasn't doing it for me. Yeah, it, a little, maybe a little uh, too polarizing, yeah, a little yeah. bit too out there. Yeah. Um, the, the i3 is polarizing as well, but yeah. with, the, with the new added body uh, additions on the facelift, it has a kind of rally, beefy vibe, so that, that's kind of okay. But the new Leaf really, really did improve, especially when they have it in the monochrome black and white uh, paint mm -hmm. scheme. That's It looks really nice, and I was lucky enough to be on the uh, the Tenerife launch oh, that's where right. we drove it up, the, uh, that, yeah. up the volcano. Yes, what a and I was I was really, really impressed yeah. by, by the Leaf, and, and I was particularly impressed by ProPilot and yeah. the e-pedal, mm -hmm. um, because I really did one pedal drive that car, and yeah. those roads are, like, they're quite sketchy roads, where uh, you're kind of battling against the bus coming the other way with a cliff edge on on one side of you. So you really do want to go for the brakes, but I didn't I didn't need to, and it almost felt uh, intuitive, like it was it was in tune with my brain. So that had to be a good a good sign for that car. Um, so it I, is, and it is just you know speaking from experience. I mean it is intuitive. I've been driving my Leaf 100% in e-pedal and all the time, and it's just 
the other day uh, when I actually took a flight yesterday to, to come over here, um, I took our one of our ice cars and I drove it in and it was I'm going, oh my God, like there's no, I got to use the actual pedal. And, yeah. and it's not slowing down a lot off the gas really much. I mean, I was so used to that, being able to gauge the, the, you know, the, the braking aspect of, of the one pedal drive experience. So. Yeah, it, it's, it really works well. I was I was really impressed, and I know that um, I, obviously I've seen the issues that people have been having. Yep. Um, I'm not I'm not a day to day Leaf driver, so I don't I don't really have much to comment or add um, to the problems people have been having. But uh, as as we've said earlier, there, there's definitely an oversight there, mm -hmm. and 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 there's definitely an issue. But most people are not doing the crazy journeys that a lot yep. of us uh, a lot of us do, and. Yep. The average mileage in the UK, I think, is 30 miles. This is the number I yeah. keep quoting anyway, yeah. 30 miles a week. Um, so I don't think, for, for, as we said, for the mass adopter, that things like rapid gate really good, are going to be a problem. A good spot, for sure. um, I agree. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly, it's certainly something that Nissan will need to address when they're, as we said earlier, when they're dealing with their yep. new customers to make sure that they're not expecting to drive it regularly to NordCap. Yeah, they just need to qualify the, the buyer better. Basically just, check that they're not me. Yep. So you can have an informed decision, right? Yeah, sure. exactly. Um, but, but yeah, I, th I, I think it's a great car. And obviously there's, um, there's Nismo Leaf coming as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't turn my crank because I think I think the Leaf itself and most EVs are quick enough. I mean, yeah. whether it's, it's going to take me you know, 7.9 seconds or, you know, 6.2 seconds. It doesn't really, it doesn't impact me because yeah. I can get up to speed on the highway just as fast and, and zip out past somebody on a two lane road if I need to, just as confidently. I, so, you know, I think the Nismo is just going to be more about um, looks than it is, yeah. you know, they're going to tweak a little bit. And maybe bit, a hint towards motorsport, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, maybe, you know, I think, uh, I think this, 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 E, you know, Formula E, now we're seeing the I-PACE, you know, series. I think that trend is going to continue. I think we'll yeah. see more manufacturers. So you're right, maybe there'll be a Nismo series. Um, you know, Nissan already has a Micro Cups challenge in Canada running. Yeah, under absolutely. Those small ice, so that could happen. We'll, we'll well, wait Nissan are an, obviously an important face of yes. motorsport, so yeah. I would... They all see the value there. I would expect them to be thinking yeah. about, yeah. I mean, obviously they're, they're now entering Formula E, but I'd be, I'd be expecting them to be thinking about something yeah. unique and exciting. So I have hopes. I think um, I think a Leaf Cup would be really, really fun. I'll be in it, man. I'll go yeah. in it for sure. That would be, that'd be fun. Especially as kind of, more, of a more grassroots uh, yes. electric motorsport. And, yeah. and we, you know, we've got things like the WRX is mm -hmm. going electric yeah. by 2020 or 2021. Yeah. I can't remember. Until everybody's which. planning it for the most, except yeah. the big three are a little slow in North America, but that's... Yeah, That's but, their choice. but I think motorsport is an important place yes. for combustion cars as well, and, yeah, and an important place to have that because ultimately, a little bit of combustion on a on a track is infinitely better than a lot of combustion in the cities and mm -hmm. on the motorways. Yep. And if if Good that point. needs to be an outlet for for a transition period or to honour where we've come from and our heritage, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not so. Uh, Oh, I can't think of the right word, but I'm, I'm not. I'm not thinking that we're going to live in a perfect world where suddenly, miraculously, there's going to be no fossil fuels and no oil used at all in, in automotive. It's going to take a long time, and and if it needs, if we need some place to, to you know, classic cars, we we can't um, we can't deny our love for classic cars. I'm sure you're a car fan as well. Yes, Ken. I am, big time. And yeah. um, you know, I, one of the things that's really really amazed me was the Jaguar E-Type Zero mm -hmm. because yep. you know, obviously, yeah. it divided opinion, but the yeah. way the way they went about with the conversion making it reversible they, it was the most respectful thing and I was very lucky to do an extended article on that car oh, nice. um, uh, earlier this year and I was blown away with it it was it was so beautiful to drive like the the silence with the with the the beauty of mm -hmm. nobody can deny that e, the e-type is incredible it was like it is one of the loveliest it's cars, an absolutely so. breathtaking car yeah. and yeah. In, in silent I know that this will divide a lot of classic car but in silent it was even better for me um, agree. but but you know we have to pay respects to 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 that and we yes. can't just kill our sport the sport that we know and love so i think i think there'll be combustion in motorsport for a long time to come well you know i was gonna ask you for a segue to wrap up but i think you just did it that was perfect timing <laughs> on that um you know i want to thank you for your time and and again my my respect to you for doing what you do and we talked about this a little bit uh, before we started taping you know about, about more women being involved i mean the first 
four, uh, three out of my four shows featured women in, in the EV world of some sort. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very important to continue to, to show that you know, women have a very positive effect um, in, in our world and in, in, in technologies and, and in things like motorsports. And we need, we need to get more out there. Uh, and EVs are for everybody. I mean, you know, it's not just a guy thing for cars anymore. It's got to be, it's got to be beyond that. So, really respect what you're doing and, and your passion in following that. Anything you want to say in closing uh, to the folks out there? Oh, put you on the spot. Um. <laughs> Yeah, well, I know, I think probably, I, I'm guessing we're preaching to a lot of the converted right now, yeah. but, but if not, and you have questions, and you want to talk about anything that we've discussed, or any any EV question, there's no question that's stupid. Exactly. Um, and the only stupid questions are the ones that come with stupid answers, <laughs> really. So, yeah. so if there's anything, um, you know, uh, certainly you, you can obviously find the, the EV Rev show on all platforms, but you can find me as well. I'm Beth Lily Race. Yeah, I was going to ask you, um, so your Twitter handle? Yeah, yeah. I'm, on, I'm on most social media. You can, you can find me, you can Google me. And um, if, if you're shy, then you can just send me a message and I, I, will, I, I will reply and I'm happy to be really honest. If you're on the fence about an EV, I'm not... You know, I believe in mass adoption, but I'm not going to push you into a decision that's wrong for you. So if you want, uh, if you want to talk to somebody that's not going to, um, not going to be too biased and help you understand more, then I'm happy to talk to you about that or any other environmental positive things. And I'm also willing, I, I, you know, I'm willing to learn. I'm changing myself all the time. Well, we all are. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's lots that I'm doing to try and improve on a daily basis. So I, you know, and I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for the help of a lot of people. And I think we need to all just keep talking to each other and um, support each other in, in making everything a better place and helping the planet. So yeah, just get in touch really. Perfect. And you're on YouTube as well. I think you do a little bit of Yeah, I'm, stuff, I'm, so. I'm not massively active on a video <laughs> a point of view, but, but I, I follow yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have, I have like long term YouTube goals, but yeah. oh yeah, if anybody is, if anybody wants to be, become my like video mule, <laughs> yeah, video mule. Get, in, get, in, get in contact. <laughs> exactly. I, well, you know, I, I bet you after this goes, you're going to get some, some uh, emails and phone calls. Maybe, maybe not phone calls, but <laughs> Good for you. Well, again, it's been a pleasure to sit down and chat with you, get your opinion on a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, the EV world, you're just a delight to chat with. Wish you all the best in your endeavors. And, you know, I can't wait till our paths cross again, whether it's going to be the next fully charged live event or, you know, next time you're, in, you're across the pond in our neck of the woods, you know, certainly look me up and drop, down, drop by. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, we'll, we'll talk EVs and go from there. So all the best. And uh, again, I encourage my, my listeners to reach out to you if they have questions or comments and certainly let me know because it is all about educating and just letting people know what's out there. So until the next show, thanks everybody for listening. Take care and we'll talk to you on the next one. This episode of the EV Revolution Show is sponsored by File Sanctuary. Need a great web host for your business? Need to get email at yourdomain.com? They provide professional, feature-rich web and email hosting for any project you have in mind. Get started today at filesanctuary.net forward slash cloud and save 10% with promo code EVREVSHOW.